Oh, hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Anybody home? Hello. 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 This is your captain speaking. Welcome <laughs> to the Sid's View podcast. Did you know Clever Lane had to take medicine to get on? I'm not Clever Lane, Mr. T. What? To get on an airplane. First of all, his character was Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang? Clubber Lang was bad. He was a bad, bad man. He was a bad man. I just said that because my uh, sister-in-law won't go on a plane. Mm-hmm. So they had, the, they had to drug the hell out of Mr. T. Mm. The, it, you, you remember the A-Team? No. You don't know the A-Team? Oh, you have to look it up. Yeah, that's... <sighs> oh, I got a... They had a black I got to post a link. See? All of my friends in college, <clears throat> I don't know why, they all had a fear of flying. They did? And so all of them would have edibles. <laughs> and they would tell me about their experience. It will be like, Remy, I landed. And it was the best thing that ever happened. And I was like, that's so nice. Well, everybody always cheers when you land. Why? Oh, hello, hello. Well, because yeah. it's like you made it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're there. I, I, I landed on, on Sunday. I, I'm not kidding you. It was like a scene from Airplane. I felt like we hit, <laughs> and the whole plane bent in half. And then what? Really, that's what it felt like in the plane. Why? Like, we hit twice. What? Like, what I mean, have, you, have you seen that you movie? Take? Like, boom, boom. No, I took a cheap flight, and that's what I get. I had rookie pilot, somebody said. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Dude, I ordered these shirts and shorts. from. It says an American-made company. Uh-huh. But then I hadn't got them in, like, a month and a half. Two minutes. Yeah, they're from China. But they are so cool. Retro Pennzoil shirts. Mm. Oh, I would like to have one Retro of those. Retro STP Were they shirt. expensive? No, they're only like fifteen ninety nine for the shirt. It said the greatest North American retro logo company. Hmm. And then I get a tracking number, and they're in China. And I'm like, I ordered a 2X. I, I expect it to fit JJ. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah, Diego. I feel like Airplane is one of like the few old movies that you guys bring up and actually like know what you're talking about. Yeah, I love that movie. Oh, the other night they had Days of Thunder on, and that stupid movie with uh, the Wonder Bread. What's that movie? Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. Yeah. Yeah. They were all on different channels, and I was like, "Whoa, this is pretty cool." Yeah, <laughs> dude. The crazy thing about Airplane is that it's rated PG. Yeah. Before they had that PG-13 rating, I still find myself tuning into Family Feud. <laughs> dude, I love it. I can't get another. No, I went to go see my banker. He had this One dope. Minute. He had this dope suit on. Yeah. So I says to him, "Dude, that is a nice suit, real nice suit." Yeah. I mean, it was full plaid. I he saw was- a YouTube clip of Family Feud. The question was, there were two dudes up there, and the question was something like, "What do you do if you, if a woman says something to you when your wife's in the bathroom when you're at the bar or something?" And yeah, yeah. Both Dude. dudes took their hands off the buzzer. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I feel like the best thing about Family Feud is it's the same seconds. joke every time. Like they ask a question that obviously warrants an inappropriate answer. They yeah. say the answer, and then Steve Harvey pretends to be shocked, and it oh, kills yeah. me every time. It works every <laughs> single time. Right. This dude, anyways, at the bank, I said, "Dude, that is a nice suit." You know what he said to me? It's a Steve Harvey suit. I'm like, no <laughs> way! All right, here we go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Man Cave for another edition of the Sid's View Podcast. Lots to talk about. Got my friends here. The on-air sign didn't want to join us, but Diego did. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up? Happy to be back for another episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Tuning in at 7 p.m., getting on your couch to watch us kick some news to you. (laughs) Yeah, we got the Reminator over here on the controls. Uh Somebody please do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful Tuesday. I'm here with y'all. Let's do this. She's getting a little bit more comfortable in her oh, intro yeah. with yes. each passing show. Gotta love it. Oh, Our yeah. man Rob down the bullpen. What's up, brother? Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Sid's View podcast. New England short track racing is right around the corner, and there's no time for wasting. We're going to get right into talking Hell about yeah. it. Hell <laughs> yeah! All right. So listen, yeah, we are excited. That I mean, I know I'm excited that the 
the NASCAR Cup content is going to drastically reduce. Oh yes, after uh, this weekend's event, <laughs> so we're all excited <laughs> to get this short track season Stop underway. It, Jeez, but I hope everybody had a good uh, uh, Easter Sunday, spent some time with family and friends, and of course, uh, hopefully, if you are a, a hoops fan like Diego and I, we are in the midst of Final Four country. Come here. on, get Both it, the UConn! Men and the women are in the uh, Final Four for uh, collegiate hoops, so that's pretty cool. Um, so one uh, quick thing from me, uh, this past week I met with, uh, the Monaco modified team and, uh, vault production is going to be doing a little social media work for them. And, uh, one of the events that we're going to be doing is the Thompson icebreaker. And so, uh, and when I say vault productions, I mean myself and Rob and Remy. How cool. Yep. So, um, yeah. So the three of us will be at the icebreaker doing some of that stuff. Don't know if it's going to be Saturday now because Mother Nature seems to be getting a little wise. Yeah. But um, I am going to be going to uh, Thunder Road and Star Speedway and Stafford. So, um, yeah, couldn't commit to the whole season, but excited to do uh, some stuff with them. So I'll be busy at Thompson. That's Monaco Modifieds and with uh, Hubby. So I'll be there with the camera getting shots. We'll all be doing stuff. Remy will be taking pictures. We're going to have a good time. So. Filling your plate up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, keeping busy, man. Yeah, so That's awesome. Yeah, so you had a busy week. Did a little traveling. D, what's going on? Yeah, what well, I had a great week. First, uh, you know, it's, I want to congratulate you guys. Uh, it's awesome that you three get to go chill and do the Monaco thing this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. I want to see Remy... Fro, maybe you can help her give her an interview or two, huh? <laughs> find a driver. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll push Remy to get oh, on camera. It's we'll be get great. her up there. We'll work that, her up to it. Yeah, I hope everybody watching, uh, they can finally get to meet you guys in person. Great, great bunch of people. So, yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so... Um, well, to that point, I told them, be prepared that you will be stopped. People will now come up to you. Oh, yeah. You know, It's not like... Remember when you said you watched the year in review video and you look back at it and you're like, oh, yeah, there's Rob, there's yeah. Remy. Like, that's... Yeah, those days I are didn't gone know. You know yeah. I watched that video. Right. I'm like, geez, I can't believe that I didn't know those guys because I would have busted their balls right. We were hidden day. in plain sight. Yeah, yeah, no, but you really weren't. And that, with your hair... <laughs> I oh, that's true. <laughs> with your that's hair, do I can't believe I didn't call you out because I'm so the person that would do that. Yeah. Right. You know, like the first time I seen you, I'm like, "Fro, what's up?" Like, what? <laughs> you know, and Rem's been great. You guys have been great. It's been a lot of fun to do the podcast, and uh, I'm gonna try to sneak into some of your little, uh, you know, maybe get to meet some people and do some interviews with people. Yeah, whatever. We, we might have to come around and get an interview from you. Uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So you guys look forward to that. Hopefully, Mother Nature uh, uh, helps you know, us out. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yep, and keeps it going. But anyways, you know, uh, last weekend. I got the, we, you know, me and my wife and little JJ, Emma couldn't make it. We decided very last minute, bought tickets from Avello because they're really, really cheap. And we flew to Hickory and surprised my brother and his family. Nice. You know, Sean called me on Wednesday and he's like, dude, you're not going to go to Hickory? And I'm like, you know, JJ had danced the week before. I got Thompson coming up. It was my only week off and I was feeling wiped out. I'm like, I just get to chill. And uh, we decided last minute to fly down. And then then our buddies that own the Groton Bowling Alley, they decided to come because we do everything together like a family. So Sean showed up in the hotel, and there's our family. Rich and Bethany didn't get in until after midnight. So when we went to Continental Breakfast the next morning, they walked down, and there they are having breakfast. So, you know, <laughs> it's great for Brody to know that everybody supports him. And it was our first big weekend uh, down at Hickory, w racing for uh, Marlow Levitt race team. So yep. <clears throat> it was quite awesome. Rough racetrack, let me tell you. I've never been there really in person to watch a race. Do you want to talk about concrete oh, or as yeah. asphalt coming up? Dude, those bumps looked aggressive on TV. I yeah. can't imagine what they were like inside the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, they were very, very aggressive. Uh, I thought Brody handled it like a champ. Uh, he has uh, just a, a phenomenal team. I know I'm giving him a plug now, but it was really awesome to be there. I can tell you this. We had our buddy Derek Smith, who's down there, who is uh, a crew chief for Dean Thompson on the truck series. He was with us all weekend. Oh, nice. We had Steve Levitt. If I don't, I shouldn't have to introduce that guy. He's probably the greatest car builder of all time, maybe, especially short track. <clears throat> we had Greg Marlowe. And then the owner of Tricon, Dave Gillen, was with us all day. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah, so if you looked at the back of the car, there was Steve Levitt, who may be the all-time greatest car builder, Little D., Who's Dean Thompson's crew chief, Marlo, and and Dave Gillen, all all arms resting on the backside of the car. And I'm like, 
I'd be like, you can't, you couldn't do this. That's what I'm right. saying. What a right. lineup. You what could, a I mean, lineup. you want to talk about a stellar team. Yes. My God. And so Brody went out, put, you know, four one hundredths of a second, one thousandths of a second off the pole of uh, Connor Hall. I think that's his name. He's the national track champ. Yep. And he's won about every race there. Now, Brody raced okay. Our restarts are a little sketchy. Mm. But uh, Brody has just a hell of a lot of talent. Finished fifth the first feature, eighth the second feature. Cars in the trail. He'd skim the wall a little bit. But uh, I, I, you know, I'm so blessed and and to be able to do this on my brother's money. It's it's awesome. <laughs> 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 no, I appreciate those guys. And we try to show as much support for them and, and as we can. They they come and watch JJ. I think you want to hear something pretty cool? Sure. Brody's going to be spotting for Emma this weekend hey. at, at the Big oh, T. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you know, so there's like, I think Brody's pumped to do it. And Emma says, says to Brody, you know, can you, can you not yell at me too bad? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Brody says, well, do you want to go faster? That's what I'm saying. That's the best right. spotters. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, anyways, I had a great weekend down there. And uh, I'm happy to plug those guys. Congratulations, Brody and all those guys. And uh, looking forward to more events with them for sure. So, Excellent. Yeah, man. All right. So listen, anybody that wants to uh, join the live chat, you got to go uh, become a podcast member. YouTube.com slash SidsView slash join. four ninety nine dollars a month. Lots of bonus content for you if you are a podcast member. And of course, you can join us on the live chat every Tuesday night when I do our live show. Um, so let's get right into it with our girl, Rem. She has this week's Serve Pro Weekly Update. Am I girl? What happened? Oh, thank you, Rem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. You got a Are little glimpse of it. Little Are glimpse of it. Are you happy? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let's talk about the winners. Let's do it. This weekend. Um, Justin Bontenor beat Ron Silk at Richmond. Um, Ryan. Great race, by the way. Yes, fantastic. Best race I, of the weekend, easily. Yeah. I turned it on from the hotel. To the last lap, I'm like, is this real or is this a replay? This, you can't make this up. Yeah. You just couldn't make it up. Yeah. No, I just thought. I mean, I was I, for a large part of when I was watching, it was Kobe, Justin, and Ron Silk up at front, yep. and I just thought these are the guys. Like yeah. these are the three craftiest veterans. Right. I mean, you know, there's other good guys on the tour. Yeah. But I mean. Those those guys are the that's the trio of of the best of the best right there. The cream people not, always right. rises to the yeah. top, dude. And then suddenly Newman came out of nowhere. I have no idea how he even got up there, but I just looked. He he was like third on one of the last restarts, and he finished eleventh. I don't know what happened. I thought yeah. he finished way higher than that. Oh, but. Newman ran that race too. Yep. Oh wow. Okay. And um, not so great uh, luck for our man Austin Beers. It was no. Like, it was, Hey, it was like Fro's little video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't clipping, but... In, yeah, catch him in the infield care center. Yeah. 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 Damn. It was rough. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, he texted me a little bit later on that night and said that he was, he's hopeful that it doesn't interfere with his performance in the bracket. <laughs> so I told him that, you know, we, we already bounced the uh, the three car from the, the bracket, so he, he still has a job. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Wow. So, yeah, that was a rough one, especially early in the race, too. Yeah. I know, because yeah. we were talking about it. We were like, oh, this race could be the determiner, like kind of jokingly right. if we pick right. over Silk or Beers, and then yeah. he crashed out. I was like, well, I guess there goes that concept. Oh, yeah. Yep. Goodness. Very unfortunate to see. Mm -hmm. All right, Rim. And then um, Ryan Newman went in the Smart Mod Tour at Tri County Speedway. Yeah, did you guys? Did you see it? I, no, well, no, because so you were, down there, were right? That track's twenty minutes away from us. Oh, really? Yeah, I I so would have went if the schedules just were different. Yeah, right. right. You know, that would have been really cool to go watch. Do you watch a lot of it, Rob? Dude, I didn't catch any of it. I yeah. sure Newman won. I was like, hello, well, Newman. Right. He's you back. Know, it's funny. I told you, I seen, you know, we, uh, after Brody's qualifying or the first feature, I had come down. And so the smart tour race was over. All those guys, uh, the drivers, a lot of them had come over to Hickory. Yep. So there was Luke Baldwin in our pit area. And I said, Luke, what happened? Uh, first, I congratulated him right. for being the king. Right? I king, said, that, yeah, king that, of the modifieds. That, that was really cool. I guess he lost uh, low gear. And so every restart, and he thought he had the best car again. So uh, 
But it was good to congratulate that kid in person. Yep. You know, it was really cool to see those guys. Yeah. And yeah. then they come over and support and show up. So it was cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, man. Yep. Okay. And then I don't know if any of y'all heard about this. Um, this news broke out as soon as the end of our live last week. But there's rumored to be a moonshine cave um, on the front on the front stretch of North Wilkesboro. Like, yeah, I don't really know what that means, to be honest. Right. I mean, it's kind of a weird, a moonshine cave. I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this. This just came out like 30 minutes before our show, but North Wilkesboro's Twitter account posted a video that was labeled the supposed moonshine cave. Yeah. Mm. And it was just like this random hole underneath the grandstands that had nothing in it. I was like, is this a cover up? Are they right. trying to hide something? <laughs> right, right. I don't know. Something? I don't know. It That's the sports knows. roots. It they got moonshiners. cool, though. Yeah. Right. Kind of oh, sounds like it's a Dukes of Hazard episode. Oh, right. You know? <laughs> no, that would be awesome, right? Let's let's burn rubber out of here. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Brian Arducci will do a part-time schedule with Tommy Baldwin Racing in the SK Division at Stafford Motor Speedway. So that's cool. Does anybody think he'll win? Ooh. Hmm? I mean, would not be surprising if he did. Listen. That kid can wheel, man. The kid went out. You know when he left Owen, they rented that Rocco car for one race? Yeah. And he won. And he won. And right. he won. Yep. Yeah. Right? I mean, who does that? Honestly, yeah. I, nobody that I know has ever gotten one of Rocco's car, one race deal, and went out and won. Yeah. I, I, I've i never seen it, I don't think. He did it. Yeah. He got in that 85. Something was going to Ray in that team. He was bad to the bone. He was so good for the first five or six races. It looked like he was almost untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm not sure what happened from there, but. Brian has the it factor, you know? Like, yeah. he, he bounces around rides a lot, which I, yeah. I wish there was a little bit more stability in his career. But right. he, despite bouncing around a lot, he's still a factor. Whenever I, he's in a race and, like, in this situation where he's going to be in a good car, you're like, oof. I he'll, think, he'll settle down. I mean, if he you know, yeah. and he's, if he's really good, and I believe he is, he, he will eventually find I a long-term. I think run. everybody knows that he can he can drive, right? Yeah, right. So he keeps getting these opportunities, whether it's financial or not. You just can't get in a Tommy Baldwin car if you suck. You're not getting in a car. Yeah, right. 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 I don't care how much money you have, right? right. So I'm going to say he wins. He wins at least one. Yeah. Right. And and then Kenny Barry. It's a Kenny Barry. Setting the car up or maintaining the car for him, mm. be a good deal for Kenny Berry too. Yeah, for sure. Right, and it also, if you look at it, it may even open a door for Kenny and PSR chassis up north. Right, there's a lot of looks. If you connect the dots here, yeah, it looks like there's some things that could happen, and a new manufacturer is moving up north. We'll see what happens there. All right, what else you got? So Justin Bonsignor. We'll drive the seven NY for the spring sizzler. Yeah, that's crazy news to me. I feel like he hasn't been at Stafford in what three years now. Whenever the tour last race there, right? Yeah, I, I'm. I, I think he ran like the fall final a few years ago, and then he just stopped coming to the track. I'm really excited to see what he can do because that man can wheel. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Like I, I'm interested oh, to see if he can just come back to the track and just run it up. I don't know if he can. I you know whenever he gets in somebody else's car. It's not quite like the 51, if that makes sense, right? I mean, he always is right. competitive, mm. but when he's in the 51, he's almost uh, almost unstoppable. Almost. He's almost too good. Almost too good. But when he gets in somebody yeah. else, it'd be interesting to see what happens. You know he's going to be up front. Yeah. You know, is he going to be as dominant as he is in the 51? Because the 7 NY is a good car. But, you know, he has that chemistry with Stone. Yeah, right. Right? They just they just click. Yeah, for sure. Right? It's, and that's nothing to take anything away from Baldwin. Mm -hmm. But it takes some time to build a relationship. Maybe this is a start of something fresh for open shows. Yeah. What's Mikey driving? He's driving the uh, Jimmy Page Oh, the car. Jimmy Page car. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good for him. Yep. Yeah, I'll be rooting for that kid, too, man. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man, because um, Justin's, you know, typically pretty loyal to the tour. So, you yeah. know, now that the Sizzler's not a part of the tour, yeah, <clears throat> he's kind of like the only heavy hitter missing, really, you know? Yeah, so, yep, yep. Yep, good stuff. And then my last and final thing, as everyone should know, 
that it is icebreaker weekend. Yes, but finally. Hell yeah. Mother Nature is not playing in our favor. Yes, yeah, Saturday Ooh. looks good. Yeah, looks Saturday looks a little rough. That's not Ooh. awful news. Is that awful news? Not for me and Diego. <laughs> not for us. Clearly, Mother Nature is a UConn fan. Hell yeah. The Final Four is Saturday. <laughs> Come on. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was in the clear. Matter of fact, when I was meeting with uh, Renee and Jeff and, and uh, Dave Monaco during the week, we were looking at the weather. And, and then it looked, I mean, that was still quite a ways away. Yeah. But it looked like we were clear sailing. And now it looks like Saturday has the potential to be just a complete washout. Yeah. So. If it does, I, mean, I know we discussed it. I'm not <clears> sure <throat> if they're going to push it all into Sunday. I mean, I know their options are limited because of the road course and weekend availabilities. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but that'll be one hell of a Sunday they show. They tend to do that, yeah. I feel like. Ooh. I feel like traditionally when one day gets rained out, they just push into yeah, one day. I, but 11 I, features <clears throat> in one day is going to be crazy. I'm I almost, can't remember if it was the World Series or or the Icebreaker, yeah. but that happened in the last couple of years where they I, had to do it all in one day. I would yep. almost be surprised if they didn't. You know, maybe make an early announcement and move some stuff till Friday. But I, this qualifying, is there qualifying Friday? Is it just practice? I think it's just practice. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, because this Friday is a good day to be able to get in a couple shows at night to ease the pain for Sunday. Yeah, because running 11 features back to back to back is going to be a complete logistical nightmare, I feel like. Right. No, nah, I don't. I don't. But they don't have a choice, I don't think, because they don't have a choice. The availability of the oval track yeah, is right. what it is, and it's not a, it's not a lot past of what they already have scheduled. Yeah, so right, right. They don't really have a choice but to try to squeeze it in. So, um, and again, they did it recently. So it's it's if that's the case, I'm I'm quite sure they'll be prepared to tackle it all in one day. Will you guys be prepared? Is the question. Yeah, we'll have to be. It'll oh, just you be guys, a, just be a long day. Be yeah, hustling. I'll be running around in the infield, getting that video, and then I'll be up in the stands for the rest of it. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Right. As far as yeah. I can tell, look for me go. in the stands. If you're there, I'll be yeah. wearing a bright reflective jacket. All right, so that's funny that we're talking about the icebreaker because now we're gonna get into the uh, Waddell Communications nostalgia nugget of the week. All right, so I figured I'd uh, drop some uh, icebreaker history for you. I was looking at some stats and stuff I've been compiling, and the icebreaker goes back to the early 70s when the Super Mods and the Modifieds actually competed in the same event, uh, same race, if you can imagine that. And um, that kind of was the deal for most of the way through the 70s where the Super Modifieds were kind of the headliners. As the 80s dawned, Richie Evans was one of the dominant guys in the early 80s. He won the Icebreaker Mod race in 81, 82, and 85. Then it became part of the NASCAR Modified Tour in 1985 and uh, lasted that way up until the last few years. Some of the guys that have won it numerous times include Ted Christopher, who's won it four times, Mike Stefanik, uh, Rick Fuller and Justin Bonsignor. The last three years, it has been part of their Outlaw Open Modified uh, events, winning Ron Silk, Mike Christopher Jr., and Ronnie Williams, the three most recent winners. This year is going to be kind of unique because it's going to have not only the tri track, but also the uh, tour race. And I did, I have a nice little funky nugget for you. So it's been. I've been going to Thompson Speedway, matter of fact, longer, if you if you can imagine this, longer than I have been going to uh, the Speed Bowl. Many people obviously always, no yeah, people always think of me uh, with the Speed Bowl, but I got a little photo for you here, so check this one out. This is me and my cousin Rich in that little uh, quarter midget. That's me standing by him in those sweet red short shorts. <laughs> No way. Dude, you look like Pontarelli. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's styling. Oh, you look like straight from the scene of Chips. And that's what people used to call me. <laughs> Did they really? Oh, people have been calling me Pontarelli my whole oh, life. That's great, yeah, dude. Yeah, Put absolutely. the glasses on. And then that's my older sister, Arlene, there. So I'm probably about, I don't know, seven or eight in this picture. Richie's probably, uh, let's see, Richie's probably that's about Richie five. That's Richie in the car? He's in the car, yeah. Who was driving that car though? Um, I don't. Here. I don't remember Richie ever racing quarter midgets right. at the little T. So I think it was just maybe like Brooksy's knew somebody that said, "Hey, can yeah. we have the kids sit in the car or something?" Right, right. So um, yeah, Richie might even. I mean, he was always when he, when we were little, we were both really little, but Richie always looked like two or three years younger than he was. Yeah, yeah. So he was probably maybe six or seven. You had but... a nice body there. Who I did? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can tell I worked out. <laughs> right. <sure. laughs> I was letting the bowl cut grow out the a little bit yeah. there, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, yeah. I've been going to Thompson for a long time, 
and uh, yeah, definitely uh, excited to get to get back after it. So um, looking forward to it, man. I am just excited that we are not going to have to talk about um, you know a lot of this NASCAR stuff. But our good man Rob, I know that he is going to be ready to give us some stat chats now. We have been fortunate enough where we have um, scored a new sponsor, the Yesteryear Racing League, who uh, got in contact with us this week. And they got a cool kind of little iRacing setup there where they uh, have car designs from, uh, you know, years gone by. They sent me a link to one of their races, and the, the Mystique, uh, Teddy Christopher's Mystique car was uh, out in front of yeah, the race. So that, cool. Yeah, so um, pretty cool to have a uh, iRacing League that uh, uh, embraces the nostalgia like I always do. Uh, so they are going to be our uh, new sponsor for their popcorn chat with our man Rob this week. Welcome to the oh, popcorn yeah. stat chat, everybody. Hold I want to thank yesteryear. Hey, uh, Rob, real quick, we just want to we just gotta say that the uh, on air sign has joined us. <laughs> oh, it's alive! <laughs> it's alive! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Northeast Racing like the on air sign is alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to cut you so off. So thanks to Yesteryear Racing League. And I just want to give another shout out. My sister Nikki has turned 20 years old today. Wow. And she's finally gonna get to experience the joys of the twenties. Nice. Yep. <laughs> the joys. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, let's start it off here. After an impressive run at Richmond, until he fell back in the pack, and to win in the Smart Tour this past weekend, can you see Ryan Newman having a career resurgence in the Modified Series? Uh, career resurgence is a is a yeah. That's that's, that's an interesting term. Yeah, I don't know if that's a resurgence. I mean, the dude is good. Yeah, I mean, he's made it to the top and won. Right yeah. at the top, is it a resurgence? He's, I think it's a it's a cool way to stay relevant and competitive past your cup career, but I, I don't a resurgence kind of throws me off. I don't really. So know. I mean, would it be a resurgence if he dominated? That's that's what I'm alluding to. Like, yeah, let's say he started going he, win to win to yeah, win. Yeah, if he in the started mods. dominating, what would you say? Would you say, wow, he may still have it on the yes. smart tour? No, on the NASCAR the modified tour, maybe. Yeah, dude, I he was knocking on a win. Like I can see him knocking a few down. You know what I oh, mean? Oh yeah, well he's on good enough to do that. Yeah, oh, for sure. No, about I mean, yeah, he's on won, the Whelan tour. He's won yeah. tour races before. Yeah. yeah, he's won at Loudon, right? But we're talking dominant. I mean, listen, the Smart Tour is pretty good, and they got they got some good star power. But oh yeah, um, it's to me, it's just it's not it's not the level of what's up here. That's right. just my opinion. Never has mm, been. Right? Nope. New England's home of the mods. Always yeah. has been. Yeah. Well, not always, but. You know, in modern history, I would say. All right. There was a huge plethora of empty seats at Richmond, along with the first ratings decrease for TV of the year outside of the 500, which was run on a Monday. Does yep. Richmond not deserve two dates on the schedule, or is the rain to blame? Don't I actually it. thought the rain early on was fun to watch with the tires. I agree. Mm -hmm. It was the best part of that race, because the rest of it was not that great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I listen, I... I took an early flight to North Carolina, and I was on two hours sleep. I made it maybe till 8.20. I couldn't tell you what happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> I get up, and I look to see where our boy finished, and I just put my phone back down at 4.30. <laughs> like, damn it, what happened? That's not what you needed to see. That's no, I'm like, very what the depressing. hell happened yeah. again? I don't mean to just to beat a dead horse there, but, man, I was just bummed. I, I ran really good early on, was running up in the top ten. And then I don't know what happened, pit penalties, and I got in the group chat, and I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, I mean, listen, you guys bust my chops for not being a Cup fan, and but these races are kind of proven why I'm not. I mean, it just – I was sitting down here. I was kind of working on stuff, and like I am if I have any other sports on, and it's like – and I keep checking in, and it's just like – boring like I, I don't know yeah. i'm just not and mm -hmm. part of it is probably because ryan's not doing well so I, right. that, that's like half of my interest is gone they already. are boring though yeah they really are i mean i uh, yeah be, because we're race fans we watch right yeah but man it's like it's like if 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 uconn's on i'm not watching the nascar race i could tell you that yeah i yeah. mean you, you kind of watch i feel like cup for the prestige, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's the top level of your sport. But, like, there are plenty of people who will argue that college basketball is more entertaining than the NBA, and you can make the same can argument I... for the short track sprints. So we had a yeah. couple guys down at Hickory this weekend. One of them is, works for uh, SHR. And so we had conversations, 
And you know what they're you know what they don't like about the upper levels of NASCAR? What? That it's it's all about the entertainment. It's around commercials. There's less practice time. They feel the same way. Like they are starting to lose interest. I feel like because of the entertainment that it has become, the less practice, the less of really working on the car hard during the weekend, they get it fast because there's no practices yep. and yeah. stuff anymore, right? And so they they have more fun coming back to the grassroots stuff, like running at Hickory. They're like, listen, the money's great up there. If we can make anything close to that money here, yep, mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm not going there. Yeah. You know, so that just goes to show you where they're at. Yeah. yeah. It just kind of sucks. But. Yeah. Well, we're going to pivot from Cup here because the next few stats are not about Cup. Thank God. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's great news, though. Uh-oh, let's hear it. Oh, gosh. All right. So, currently, these are the sizes of the rosters for Thompson, the weekly series rosters. We got 10 mini stocks, 11 604s, 12 late models, 20 street stocks, and 22 SK lights currently on the rosters. Although it's likely they're going to grow a little bit more, I was kind of shocked to see how low the entry lists were. I kind of felt like the hype around Thompson was a little elevated this year. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I, I hmm. think it's a, maybe a little deceiving. I'll believe it after I see it this weekend. Right? I, I Like I said to Sid and you guys before we came in, you know, we've kind of made a decision months ago to go bring Emma to Thompson. We have two cars. Yep. I mean, I put my, I put my thing in a couple days ago. Right? Mm -hmm. And there's probably people that know – that it doesn't matter. They'll show up and race. If Al Stone wants to show up and be the 12 Connecticut, just be the 12 Connecticut. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. And it's a big weekend. It's got a lot of hype. Like, I feel like it's too bad it's going to be so damn cold. Right? That sucks. Because if yeah. it was 75, you know, because oh. there's no point system. So that's a bad part. So there's no points there. So if you don't want to race, you're not losing out on anything. Thompson's not doing points this year? No. Really? So Wait, they, what? That's news to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're running on a race by race basis, and they, and they just handicap. They're each not race. crowning champions at the end of the year. No, not that I know of. It's it's wow. a that's race. bizarre. So no, I really like it though because then you're not committed. <laughs> I mean, but the bad part is like this weekend it's cold. If I didn't feel like going, I just say, hey guys, listen, it's going to be forty and damp. Yeah. We'll just go and it's warmer. Right. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect us one way or another. Maybe I'm wrong. If 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 uh, I mean the people in chat are like clapping back at you, Diego. What are I, they're, they're kind of saying that they think there is a points. I don't know. Let me know. Oh, there is a points in a championship. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. I thought it was a per race basis. That's what I was under the standing of. But so I said maybe the car count would get hurt if it was that way because then you just show up if you want and you don't want to show up. I I kind of like the idea. Yeah. Right. Because the commitment level that's a lot. Well, it sounds like you're the only one that likes that idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I do agree with you that uh, the entry list can be deceiving, and it is a little bit, um, I don't know if alarming is the right word, but I thought maybe there would be more, especially like for an event that's at the beginning of the year where maybe you would expect more entry lists to be. Um, with a big, <clears throat> big, big couple races, the pass. Yeah. The the tri -track. But I mean, you yourself have said you've been planning to go the whole winter, and you didn't sign up until yeah. send your stuff in until the last couple of days. Right. So, yeah, right. they could be deceiving. It's possible. But it is not surprising that the SK Lights and Streeters are the ones that have the highest Oh, uh, not at all. Counts. I mean, we were talking just last week. Uh, the yeah. street stocks are, like, one of the best divisions of Thompson, if oh. not the best. Yeah. yeah I gonna... want to see a 30-car field for that division, to be honest. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to see my brother come out in the trucks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh that would piss a lot of people off. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the wagon? Is the wagon still Oh, the wagon is dead. It's dead. No, it's somebody, dead? No, somebody bought it, and oh, right. that has moved no. on. So, yeah. Yep. That was always one of the most fun cars to watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Rob, what else you got? Anything else? We kind of touched on this already. If you guys have more to say on it, we can do it. If you guys don't care, we can just skip it. Uh, Bonds and your... It's coming back to the Sizzler, and Bonsa confirmed in chat the last race that he ran at Stafford was the 2021 fall final. Yeah. How do you think he's going to do against the Stafford regulars? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, the monkey off his back of winning at Stafford is gone now. So, oh, right. Yeah, sure. so, I mean, listen, he's one of the best there is right now. So, right. I mean, um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he was dominant. It really wouldn't. I, I mean, it, would surprise if you, I, it wouldn't surprise me if you won. Yeah. But, you know, I think Silk's running it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's some 
there's some people coming. This, you know, the one thing that Stafford maybe was lacking with all their open 80s was were these names, right? And this is, you know, when they ran two or three, they would get Silk, mm-hmm. right? They would get uh, Tommy Baldwin to bring a car up. Yeah, but this is also the Sizzler. It's not an open I, 80. Yeah, I know. And it's 20 grand to win. Is it yeah, but isn't it isn't it set up as uh, an open show, right? Yeah, but it's the sizzler. Like that's yeah. different. Yeah. You know? Don't you agree? I mean, oh, I sizzler, do agree, yeah. but it's just exciting to have the big names back. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, the, and them open 100%. shows. Yeah. Yeah, but it like this isn't an ordinary open show, I feel like. Like we were talking about this a couple months ago. We were we agreed that the sizzler was like the five hundred yeah. of short track racing. Yeah. It's got even like the dual races, you know what I mean? I heard Rainbow was coming too. Really? Come on, really? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> right. All right, so let's get after it. It is time after weeks <laughs> of doing some pairings of the uh, modified drivers in the area. We are down to the final four. So let's throw over to you the uh, throw that up there, Rem. So there is the big bracket right there, okay, with all the 64 drivers that we started with but we're gonna pare it down here a little easier on the eyes here so i'm gonna hit you up with this right here then uh so this is really from the the sweet 16 on so we have two two um just unbelievable pairings here so we got the young gun austin beers against defending tour champ ron silk and then we have arguably the best sk modified driver of all time keith rocco against his one-time just arch rival going back a couple of years, Ronnie Williams, who has oh, yeah. been stout in both the SK and tour rides uh, over his career. Mm. All right. So <clears throat> we got our man Fran is on the chat. Fran's ready to go. We're going to have him. Let me see. Um, I think I want to have Fran go first here. So, Fran, why don't you chime in with your pick for Austin Beers versus... Ron Silk. Oh, yeah. This ought to be good. <clears throat> this is a nice matchup here. Yeah. Heavyweights. Right? Yeah, this is a nice matchup here. All right. So let's bring the bracket up here. So he is uh, he's delaying it here. Huh? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him out. I'm going to give him one more second here if he wants to chime in. <laughs> Got to go with the defending champ, Ron Silk, he says. Sure he does. Mm. All right. Rem? I did not have you go first, but you're going to go second. Okay. I'm fine with going second. Listen. <clears throat> oh, she's got an explanation. <laughs> Listen, I have an that's explanation. a good explanation. Yes. This is my answer is because of the race at Richmond. Stop it. But let me explain. Let me explain. Hear me out. Okay, go. Okay. So We're I all think ears. Ron Silk was a little too clean. If Austin Beers was able and like didn't get as bad of damage, he would have able to win it and put Ron into the wall. And so I chose <laughs> Austin Beers. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow. Very Same. good. All right. All right, Rob. Uh, top that, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if I can. That was quite the performance. That was. So 1-1. One, one that was got. something. Austin versus Silk yep. is 1-1 one, one right now. So uh, to be frank, I got to give it to Silk. Like we were saying, he's still firing off on all cylinders. One of the craftiest veterans in the field. But let me say something about Austin Beers, okay? Okay. He is showing a lot of signs of, of potential greatness. I don't think mm-hmm. there's anything stopping him from becoming a Ron Silk-level driver. It's just at this current moment, I got to give the edge to Silk. Okay. He's a defending champ. He, he's winning all over the place. But Beers, he does put up a fight in this matchup, I will say. So when it comes to Beers, Ooh. you're saying... I like that. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I'll be watching <laughs> him. Oh, yeah. All right, Diego, 2-1 Silk. Over to you, my friend. You know, I got a lot of history with Ron Silk, mm-hmm. and it was short-lived because I was not nearly as good as him. <laughs> <laughs> but I did right rear him and put him in the fence one time and destroy his car. Wow. And I felt real good about was it. Was this SK's early SK's, 2000s? he drove uh, Bruce Fontaine's number one. Yep. He just kept hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And I just said, you know what? Typical Diego fashion. I just came unplugged. (laughs) (laughs) I put him right in. Everybody wanted to fight me after. This was great. This is great. (laughs) But he's turned out to be one hell of a shoe. 
Austin Beers, you're badass, and you're going to be great. The team you're with is great, but I got to push Ronnie Silk through here. Pushing him Kidding through. Me. Wow. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. Well, I was, I had. Is that 2-2? Two, two? No, it was 3-1. to one. So oh. Ronnie Silk is in. Yeah, so for the same reasons uh, that you stated, um, Love Austin, his car owner on the tour is one of my favorite people in, in racing, and uh, I think he's he's just getting started. But Silk's Silk's at the top right now. Silk it's, is yeah. just unbelievably good. So all right, yeah. so that's one into the championship round. Mm-hmm. Now let's get into it. Oh, this ought to be good. All right, <laughs> Rocco, wow. Ronnie Williams, oh. Fran, back over to you, my friend. What oh, do you yeah. got? Yeah, well they're on a small delay, so Fran. <laughs> So yeah. Fran's gonna have some suspense for us. Yeah. Oh, no, he loves this. <laughs> yep. Yo, Fran loves doing this. I stuff. mean, it is pretty good that we we did get down to Rocco and Williams because I mean And that's not even planned. Yeah. They, they did have ju- one of the best rivalries. I knew going. you were pissed about, you know, certain people going through all the things. Like, what are you guys <laughs> thinking? But that's what made it really good. Of course. The debate on who was good, who wasn't. Yeah. You know? Uh oh. Fran just made his pick. Kid oh. Rock. Kid Rock. <laughs> wow. Right. Who is he racing against? Oh, Ronnie Williams. Williams. All right, Diego, that's over to you. Keith won. Keith pisses me off a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's so damn aggressive. You know, listen, I think I don't think his skills have fallen off. He's just in the business and family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take that stuff away and say, all right, we're back to business. You're not doing rentals. Work on your own stuff. He is one of the best still. I, you know, you put this race at the speedball in an SK, it's over. Keith Rocco's moving through. Sorry, Ronnie, I love you. But Keith is moving on for me. Wow. 2 nothing early start for Keith Rocco. Now we're over to you, Rem. Um, so I I did not choose what you and Fran chose. I went with <laughs> Ronnie Williams. It's a good pick. Yeah, it is he's a good, good pick. That's why I picked him. Oh, wow. Oh, All right, he's feisty. He's feisty. Seriously. Feisty over really? there. Some of the SK best appearing bleeding into this. Check wow. out that video. All right, well, I'm going to go next. This was a tough one for me as well, I have to say. But I keep going back to the um, the side-by-side race that we captured in 2019. Who, epic, won, who won that one? Epic battle, epic battle between those two, and the guy who won was Ronnie Williams. Oh! <laughs> so that's my pick. So what is it? Two to two. Two to two. And who's to it me? Down to? Over to Fro. Oh, my man Fro. To decide the championship oh, game. Fred. Come on, Fro. Come on. <laughs> so this is, this is entertaining. Yeah. This is real entertaining. Now, in the last <laughs> section you. of our bracket, I made a somewhat controversial <laughs> pick. Okay. According to some people, mm-hmm. of putting Keith over Doug Kobe, right? Oh yeah, a little piss, bit. You piss people just a off. little bit. It's a little bit controversial. <laughs> you know, you gotta throw someone there, otherwise, what's the point? And so, if I put him over Doug Kobe in a head-to-head matchup, Doug Kobe versus Williams, I'm picking Doug Kobe, and for that reason, I'm picking Keith over Williams. All right. Hmm. Wow. Wow, Keith. Which All means right. Keith, Kid Rock, moving on to wow. the championship. Does okay. everybody agree with that? I don't know. Ask I mean, ob- obviously, Remy and I don't. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> That's All amazing. All right, so here is our championship um, face-off. Ron Silk, 4-1 to one winner over Keith Rocco. What was he, a five seed? Rocco was a five, was a five seed, seed this yeah. year. Wow. Yeah. Five seed into the championship game. Now, this is not rehearsed. We don't know anything here. I don't have any graphics pre-made. We're going on the fly. Fran, we're going to start with you once again on the chat. This is the championship. This is it. This is for the March Madness Modified Championship. This is like UConn versus Purdue. Am I getting ahead of myself? My Maybe. man Fran says, cue up one shining moment, which is the CBS song they play at the end of every tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going, Ron Silk. All right, Rem, over to you. See, you're making me choose between the best of the best and someone who's like mediocre right now. Who's mediocre? Wow! Wow. (laughs) So, do that that again. 
Yeah, that needs to be hit one more this time. This needs some of these right here. <laughs> oh, God, with Rod Silk. Wow. <laughs> People can hate me. It's okay. That's why we love you, man. Mm. Fearless. That's a fearless pick. Mm. Fearless comment, I should say. All right, go ahead, Diego. Over to you. Well, this is what I'm going to say again. Ronnie Silk pissed me off a lot in my younger <laughs> career. Right? Right? And I could pick who the hell I want to pick. Yeah. But Keith pissed me off a lot, too. But he mm-hmm. was always nice about it. You put this race at the speedball head-to-head in an SK, that's how I, my brain thinks. Right. You know who I'm picking? Tell me. Keith Rock. That's right, baby. I rode him to the end. Bam! All right. So, listen... <clears throat> What is that, 1-1? One, one? I'm going to take the next pick here. Oh, is that 2-1? Two, 2-1, one. Two, one, Silk. So as you know, I take this personal. <laughs> Why do you take it personal? When, I, when we make these picks. Yeah, it, you do, too. It creates good content. Yeah, you bitch right. after. Why did you do that? This we is create great. good content. Okay? I love it. So I know when I see Ron Silk at the track and I say, Hey, Ron, good to see you, buddy. Put a camera on your car. <laughs> Absolutely, Sid. No problem. Great. Yeah. Keith Rocco haven't put a camera Stop. on his car and since other than the show. Yep. But that was many years ago. And listen, Keith's one of the best of the best. Uh in the Mount Rushmore. Not even the Mount Rushmore. He's the guy. I would even take him over Teddy if you were gonna name the best SK modified driver of all time. Keith's the guy. Right. But right now, Ronnie Silk. I think, actually, it's Ron Silk. I don't want to get him mad, but still calling him Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Ron Silk is the guy. Oh, yeah. He's hey, the hey. defending champ. I mean, what I saw at New Smyrna, there's no slowing down in that 16 car. He is, he's just awesome. Oh, they're firing on all cylinders. Yeah. So, um, I think it's kind of cool that Rocco, you could say, like, uh, you know, not as eloquently as Remy did, that maybe he's, you know, right. on the back end of right. his illustrious career. Right. And uh, still made the final here as a five seed. But Ronnie's the guy. So Ron Silk in that 16 car is the inaugural modified March Madness I want to know who Fro would have picked. Fro, what do you got? If you had handed it to me for the final... They would have still been Ron Silk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, Keith Rocco, all-time favorite of mine, especially oh, at the yeah. short track level. But against Ron Silk, who's I, arguably at the top of his game, I, I just I, I couldn't do it. I can tell you this. As much as Ronnie pissed me off on my early days in my SK career, those guys are really good, and Ron has become a great driver. Yeah. But, Sid, let's be real. It was because of the camera thing, right? It was definitely from the camera thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, you know, when that you happens. You can't do that. Oh, I, I mean, absolutely he absolutely can. can. <laughs> he just did it. What do you mean? I mean, because, listen, I don't There's. I don't have anything, you know, it's, when somebody says that I can't put a camera on their car, that, well, I mean, what are you going to do? You can't argue with them. It's their car. Right. Their car, their rules. Does that piss you off when it they do does. that? It does, and this is this is my only chance to get back. This is the come up and <laughs> oh, the revenge stop. of Cindy. He's That's like, right. oh yeah, you didn't want to put a camera on. You're not moving on. <laughs> I mean, listen, you know, this is called Sid's view. Sid's view. Right. Sid's view podcast. This right. is my view. Right. So I'm telling you that I'm just not having any of it. And so you know, listen, Rocco was nice enough to let me put a camera in his car for the show, but ultimately. Just, just not as inviting when it comes to that, and uh, you know. So listen, throw up the graphic. Let's give Ron his, his championship. Uh, so that's the completed by a four-one vote. My man Ron Silk taking it down. So listen, we had some great upsets. That was a lot of fun. Noah Corner, the eleven seed, made it to the Sweet Sixteen. Right, Brian Narducci made it to the final eight as oh, an yeah. eight seed. A lot of fun. So um, it just goes to show. Uh, even if they haven't done anything, Noah hasn't had a great career, but there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? So people see that, and to move on to that far and around, I hope those guys <laughs> kept up with the brackets as we did. Yeah. And I think a lot of people did. I think it started, yeah. you know, it started perking people's interest. I see people getting pissed, like, oh, they need to restructure the bracket. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, this is our pick. Hey, and if right. I'm if I'm not wrong, I mean, I'm sure we'll run it back on this next year, perhaps. Oh, it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't. And I think as we get to the tracks, uh, we'll we'll find out just how much people were watching because we'll. Can hear I the tell comments. you something? Yeah. I know who somebody was watching that 
that that I that I bumped into at the airport on Sunday. Yeah, who? Seven o'clock in the morning. Here comes Teddy Hodgson. Never <laughs> even made the bracket and almost pulled off a couple open eighty wins. Yep. Yeah. At Stafford. No, he year. was in the bracket. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was in the bracket. Oh, I didn't think he was. Hold I didn't second. remember him being in the bracket. No, I don't think that. I think we we may have bounced him in the early round. The very first yeah. round. Yeah. Because I, think. I remember choosing him. So he lost to Brian Arducci. That was an oh, eight, that was an oh, eight nine yeah. matchup. Yeah, that's tough. So that was an yeah. eight nine matchup. Yep. Okay. It is going to be really interesting though after the fact to see how our picks actually translate to on track performance this year. I know a lot of guys that got eliminated early, like for instance Noah Corner. Like a lot of a lot of the younger guys haven't had a whole ton of performances yet, because you can fluke into some good performances as a, as a young driver, and you can have some awful luck as well. Like yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting to see I, what direction they're going to end up going in. Yeah, I'm for sure rooting for Noah Corner this oh, year. Oh, me too. The reason. Caterpillar I, kid. Yeah, I really. That's a good nickname. Where, geez, Matt Buckler passed some stuff on to me. <laughs> the Caterpillar kid. Yeah. So there was some. Uh, you know, if you look back, hindsight, 2020. Um, I'm still fired up that Chase Dallin got bounced in the first round, which was to no corner. Right. Um, probably screwed John Puglia with an 11 seed. That was probably inaccurate. I think we probably uh, we had Andrew Krause as a 16 seed. That's that that's bad. That was a real bad. Yep, seed. that was bad. That was yep. a bad draw there. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, but still a lot of fun, man. You know, we had Flannery. Flannery made it to the uh, Sweet 16 as a seven seed. Swanson made some big runs. Swanson was, uh, yeah, 10 and 0 over the first two. That's rounds. what I'm saying. Right. He was just on fire. So he yep. ran into Beers, right? Yep. Hit a brick wall there. Yeah, Beers was a machine. He took out uh, Rob and uh, Remy's uh, Bissette. Knocked yes. him out. <laughs> Rob and Remy. Oh, yeah. That's yes. a fine way of putting it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you guys going to root for him this year? <clears throat> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not incorrect. Yes, yes. It's just kind of tug and cheek, no, I you know? Loved, I love George Brissett. I like yeah. saying his name because you guys love him so much, but it's fun to, it's fun to bust your guys' butt about him. <laughs> All yeah. right, everybody. So, listen, we are super excited that we are finally going to get going with this season. I can't wait until we are doing short track action on a regular basis. We, all four of us, will be at the track on, uh, well, Saturday we don't know about, but yeah. this weekend we'll just say. Let's keep it at that. Diego, give us the shout-outs. Yeah, I want to thank uh, Surfro for the weekly update. Of course, White Elf Communications for the Nostalgia Nuggets. New sponsor yesterday, Racing League for the Popcorn Snapchat. Of course, Vault Productions for this kick-ass studio. And all you guys and podcast members for tuning in. We appreciate it so very much. All right, don't forget, follow us on social. We're going to have all kinds of daily content like we do every week behind the scenes. Find out what was behind the chalkboard reveal. And don't forget that on Thursday, we'll be dropping more content for you. We've got best appearing legend cards. That's going to be the last in our series until the season starts. We'll revisit that with everybody's got their new cars looking good. We'll see you next Tuesday.